Hello, and welcome to For Him Online Ministries. I'm going to be preaching a message on John 3.16, the most famous verse in the Bible. And the title of the message is, God Loves You. Satan Hates You. John 3.16 before I get into the message, I want to pray, and I have two prayer requests on my heart, just so heavy on my heart. The first one is is my wife, Jenny. She has been having major health issues over the last seven years, and it's gotten to the point now where uh, right there's just no medical answer. I know Jesus is the answer, and I know Jesus is powerful enough to save. I've been praying that Jesus will save my wife for over seven years. There are so many around the world praying for my wife, and thank you so much. And so I ask you to pray for my wife, Jenny, and for her health. And the Lord is sustaining her and keeping her alive. Um... But we're put, I'm putting my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. She's in the hands of Jesus, but she's suffering every day, and it really that really hurts my heart. And so I ask you to pray for her. Pray for my son Jeremiah, 12 years old. What a precious boy! We adopted him uh, when he was only two years old. We picked him up at the hospital when he was only two months and 12 days old. But he has not received Jesus Christ as his Savior. And I was thinking about him a while ago. This message is a salvation message. And so let's go ahead and pray. And I'm going to pray for these two prayer requests. Pray for the message. Heavenly Father, I humbly come before you right now. And oh Lord, I pray for my wife Jenny. Lord, I pray for her. I pray that you will touch her body. Oh, Lord, I pray. And, Lord, I just pray you will show us exactly what to do. And, Lord, I pray for my precious baby boy. I pray for his salvation. I pray that he will receive Jesus Christ as his Savior. Touch his heart. I pray that he will say yes to the he, the leading of the Holy Spirit, the urging of the Holy Spirit, the conviction of the Holy Spirit for his salvation. And, oh, Heavenly Father, I pray that you will take this message and spread it all over the world. And I pray that thousands upon thousands of souls around the world will receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. I pray all of this in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. And so, going to read John chapter 3, verse 16. This message is all about this one verse in the Bible. And so I want to go ahead and read it. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What a wonderful verse. You take a look at this verse, and it's the most famous, most quoted verse in the Bible, except for maybe the shortest, John 11.35, Jesus looking at uh, the hurt and the pain and the sorrow of Martha and Mary, in the passing away for uh, four days before he had been buried four days and looking at their sorrow and feeling their sorrow and the people all around that loved Lazarus and in John eleven thirty five, the apostle John said Jesus wept and you know Jesus is weeping for you and for me all over the world lost souls he's weeping and we need to cry out to the world about Jesus Christ in John 3.16. And But it's the most famous and quoted verse in the Bible. If you take a look at sporting events, you'll see someone with a sign, John 3.16. 
it's so amazing how that that has happened. But let's go ahead and get into the message. Uh, first of all, I, I, let me say this. I just, I just pray that you will share this message to those around you, to the lost. Uh, the Lord is really using a message, a salvation message. What can wash your sins away? He's really using that. And uh, I just thank the Lord for that. But I just urge you to share the message. It's a salvation message. Actually, I preached this message two mornings ago to uh, students in Uganda. And the Lord touched, really touched the hearts of them. And so the Lord moved upon my heart to preach it on the YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and get started. For God. Who is God to you? There is only one true God. Yes, there is the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And they are, are have their own jobs to do. But God the Father, God the Son, and the God the Holy Spirit is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. No other gods, no other little G gods can say that. You take a look at the history of Israel and there is evidence that there is one true God and he is the God of Israel. One of the smallest nations on the face of the earth today and it is hated by most of the world. Why is that? Because they represent God. And, and God chose uh, Abraham to come out and he chose him as a nation to reveal himself to the world. And then when the nation of Israel as a whole rejected their Messiah, the torch was passed from Israel to the church, the New Testament church. And we have been carrying that torch for 2,000 years. The church is evidence there is one true God. And if you are a true born-again believer, you have had that second birth, then you know there is evidence in Keith Watts. There is evidence in all over the world of the true believers of Jesus Christ. They have Jesus Christ, not false religion or Christless religion. So there is one true God for God. But there also is Satan, old Lucifer, that old serpent, and he is alive and well. And the spiritual warfare has been going on between God, God, and Satan. Continually. And the battle is over lost souls. And today the battle is raging all around us. And it's over lost souls. So yes, there is a God. But oh yes, there is a Satan. Old Lucifer, Belial. I like to call him Bilal, uh, Lord of the Flies, and he is. And Satan is determined to hold on to the billions of people today to die and go into hell and cast into the lake of fire. And he is doing everything in his power to keep everyone. He does not want to lose one child, one youth. One 20-year-old, one elderly, he does not want to lose one. And boy, when he loses one, I believe he gets mad and the demons are in that area get mad and go all out to keep the rest. The fight is raging on all around us. And so there is one true God. And there is one Satan, and he is alive and well. I believe it's Ezekiel chapter 14 describes Satan, a beautiful creature. One of the most beautiful creatures ever created. And he got to look at it, and his being can make music. Music comes out of him. And he got to looking at himself, and he's like, wow, I'm, I'm greater than God. And when he put pride before himself, the first sin... He was cast out of heaven and no longer God's anointed cherub that was uh, around the throne. And so there is one true God, but there is also Satan, the enemy. For God 
so loved the world. Oh, God showed his love to the world when he gave his only begotten son. When he gave his son, he gave his all for you and for me. And God, yes, he loves the world. But I'm telling you, just as much love that God has, Satan hates and despises you. He hates and despises you more than anything. He hates and despises God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. He hates Israel today more than ever. ever. He hates the born-again Christian and who we represent and what we represent. And he hates you. Oh, and you need to realize this. The Bible, Jesus said he is the father of all lies. He's a liar and the father of it. And he is telling you lies. And you're going to listen to those lies all the way till you pass the point of no return. And you die in your sins and cast into the lake of fire. And you realize all the lies were lies. People are living on lies all over the world today. For God so loved the world. How did he show that love? I said it a while ago. That he gave his only begotten son. I, I can't imagine in my mind taking my son and pouring my wrath on him and sacrificing him one of the most horrible deaths that has ever been in history for mankind, for an enemy, for, for the lost, for those that are going to die and reject Jesus, his only begotten son. I can't imagine that. But that's how much God the Father loves you and me. That he gave his all when he gave his only begotten son. And Jesus Christ gave his all when he gave his body for Keith Watts. When he gave his body for you and for me. Every person that has ever lived on the face of the earth. From Adam until the last person that is born on this earth. Jesus died for all. Jesus loved all with a love that's out of this world. God the Father loved all with, with a love that is out of this world. But you know what? Just as much as Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit loves you and me, Satan hates you and me. And we find here that for God so loved the world that he gave. He, he gave and gave and gave. What did he give? All Bible says all good gifts come from above. All good gifts come from above. What is Satan given? Satan is not going to give you one good thing. Never will. Never has and never will. Satan will not give you one good thing. But I will tell you what Satan will give. Satan will give you lies. Satan will give you sorrow. Satan will give you fear. Satan will give you anxiety. Satan will give you tears of sorrow. Satan will give you the thing that he wants to give you more than anything. And that's the lake of fire. That is the second death. And he wants to give that to you. And he is going to give and give and give. But it's all the evil and bad gifts that you can give. I pray that you will wake up and realize that he is a liar and the father of it and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you'll have experience the best gift that you have ever given. When God gave his son, he gave the most priceless, precious gift that mankind can ever give. If you take all of the world, all the money, all the property, everything that's worth of value, you take that into my hands. It is no comparison to the priceless of Jesus' body. You cannot put a price on Jesus' body. And you know what? God the Father and God the Son puts you priceless. It, what, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What does it profit a man? And so John 3.16, for God so loved the world.
that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, whosoever, oh, you're the whosoever, I'm the whosoever, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that if Keith Watts believeth in him, he shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You can put your name there in the whosoever. You, you, you feel like you've sinned too much. You're the whosoever. You feel like you're too good for heaven, that you're going to heaven on your, on your works and on what you've done or not done. You're the whosoever. The God's grace will reach below your sin. God's love will reach below your sin. And Jesus' sacrificial shedding of his blood reaches below your sin and can bring you up and save you. Whosoever believeth in him. And and you know what? Satan. You know who whosoever his scripture verse is? Whosoever name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Are you that whosoever? Jesus wants you to be the whosoever of John 3.16. Satan wants you to be the whosoever of John chapter 20 verse 15. I believe John 20.15. I mean Revelation chapter 20 verse 15. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. Whosoever believeth in him. And you know, there are billions of people that believe in God and may even believe Jesus, but they never gave their heart and life to Jesus. They never repented of their sins. They never repent. And that means going in one direction and complete doing a turnabout and giving your heart and life to Jesus Christ. The sin you love, the life you love, the pride you love, yourself you love, you just let go of it all and give your heart and life to Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 10 verse 10, but with a heart man is made unto righteousness, but with a mouth his confession is made unto salvation. And so, we find here, believeth in him. Yes, it takes faith to believe in him. The Bible says the demons believe and tremble. But they're still headed to hell. And I pray, I hope and pray, that you will receive Jesus Christ as your Savior today. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Should not perish. What is that talking about? Hell. And eventually hell and all the dead in, that are dead within, without Christ is cast into the lake of fire. I quoted that verse a while ago. This is the second death. That's what it says at the, at the end of that verse. This is the second death. And is that you? Are you going to be thrown into hell? Yes, there is Satan, old Lucifer, that old serpent. There is, he is there. And God prepared hell for Satan and all of the fallen demons. He prepared hell for them. He did not prepare hell for you and me and for mankind. He made a way. But there's only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. He is the only way. His blood is the only thing that will cleanse you. There is nothing else to cleanse. That water baptism will not cleanse you. It will, keep, it will get you wet. The water baptism is a picture of what you, you, happened to you on the inside and you are identifying yourself to the world that I am in Christ and He is in me. 
and myself has died under that water, and when I come up, I come up new. I now baptize thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the newness of his life. When you receive Christ, you have become a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's what the Apostle Paul said. When that second birth happens, it's for real. It is for real. Oh, yes, there's a God. And we're fixing to talk about him and the place where he's at. But oh, there is a hell. There is going to be a lake of fire. If you don't believe in hell, go to a volcano and look what's coming out. Where do you think that came from? The, in the core of the earth. They used to teach that in school. They don't do it anymore. Probably because uh, that's the evidence of hell. If you need any evidence, it describes hell. When the rich man died without Christ, what does it say? He went down into hell. He was on the face, the surface of the earth. And so now the last part of this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is future tense. That in the English is future tense. It says, but have everlasting life. You either have life or you don't. John chapter, uh, uh, 1 John chapter 1, uh, verse, I can't, verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. Once you die, you're either going to go to hell or you're going to go to heaven. Which one do you want? Do you love your sin so much that you want to go to hell? There's a man I've been dealing with at works. So watch some of my salvation messages. You can see the Holy Spirit dealing with him and dealing with him about his sin. But he loves his sin more then he wants to go to heaven. Oh, I pray that he will receive Christ as his Savior. I can't say his name, but the Lord does. Every time at work, when I see him, I pray for him, for his salvation. And so, which one is it going to be? Are you going to heaven, or are you going to hell? Oh, yes, there is a God. But, oh, yes, there is a Satan. Now, I ask you this question. I ask you this question. I'm going to be turning to Romans uh, chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. I want to read it at the end here. I want to ask you this question. If you died today, would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? Romans chapter 10. I can quote them, but I want to read them. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It says, but, um, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But listen to verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. A man that was my lead man at a job came over to me, I was spray painting, he came over to me, and he said, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins, I believe that he was buried, and I believe that he rose again, why am I not going to heaven? And I turned to him, and I quoted Romans chapter 10, verse 10 to him, and I said, God wants your heart, and you won't give it to him, and that's why, and he bowed his head, turned, and walked away. Easy believism will not get you to heaven. E easy believism is of the devil. It's a lie. It's a lie. And so, in Romans chapter 10, verse uh, 10, For with the heart man believeth 
in unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. There's so many people with the head knowledge of Jesus, but not the saving knowledge of Jesus. Jesus uh, doesn't know their name, and they don't really know Jesus' name. But I'm telling you, at 10 years old, when I received Christ as my Savior, I knew his name, and he knows my name. His, the sheep are the only ones that hear his voice. The, the trumpet, or the, the uh, ear, these ears are going to hear the trumpet. These ears hear Jesus. But you don't if you're lost in your sins. I'm going to say a sinner's prayer right now. And you pray this same prayer re at repeating what I say. But it is from your heart to God's heart. And you mean it. You're just not lip service. You're, you mean it from the heart. Dear God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I know that Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, died on the cross for my sins. And I know he was buried. And I believe that you arose him from the grave on the third day, that precious Sunday morning. And oh, I ask Jesus to come into my heart and save me and change me. I repent of my sins. I repent of my life. I give my heart, my life to you. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for my name being in the Lamb Book of Life. And I have a place in heaven, and you are preparing a place for me. Thank you for saving me, Jesus. I pray all of this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen and amen. And Lord, I pray that you have said that prayer today. If you have, you are saved. I pray. Just get a hold of me on Facebook. Prayer Warriors for Him Online Ministries. The number four, Him, capital H, capital I, capital M, for Him, for Jesus. That's what this ministry is all about. For Him Online Ministries. And just, or message me here on YouTube to get a hold of me. And so, I pray that you have a good day today. It's Sunday morning. Looking forward to church. And hearing our interim pastor, Brother Bo Carpenter. But I pray that you have a good day today. Lord bless you. Bye-bye.